Hello, sixth grade history students. Welcome to Mrs. Hansen's history class. Um, we're going to try and, and do this like we would have our normal class time, our normal lecture. I'm going to be uh, talking about um, chapter 11 today. We're going to start on page 290 in your book and in your SAM. We're going to be on 159. This is your chapter 11 organizers organized a little bit differently than... Um, uh, than some of your organizers have been in the past. So you're going to need to pay attention. Um, in your organizer, on page 159 is where it starts, but in the top right corner of each square, there's a little number, and I'm going to refer to those numbers. I'm going to call those our section numbers, okay? <coughs> so let's get started. This is going to be kind of fun. Um, I usually talk about this a little bit in American history in the beginning, and so that's why we had skipped to this chapter, because I wanted to make sure we did some other things first. But now we have time, and we're going to get to go back to it, so this is great. When we talk, Everything we've talked about so far has been in um, Europe or Asia or Africa, and now we're going to go to the other side of the world, to the Americas thousands of miles from Roman Greece, and we're going to go to the part of the world that is now known as Mexico and Central America. Um, there were people in this part of the world that did amazing things during this time period, and their civilizations were a secret from the rest of the world until those European explorers, the Spanish and Italian and Portuguese explorers, came to what they called the New World. <coughs> now, if you look at a globe, you'll see that there are huge oceans between um, the Americas. So between the North America and South America and Europe and Africa, there's the Atlantic Ocean. And then on the other side, between North and South America and Asia, there's the Pacific Ocean. And <coughs> when, when you think about it, Pardon my cough. I'm having pretty bad allergies today. Um, when you when you think about like the technology that you would need to get from one place to another, as far as like naval technology, boats, um, it's a, a pretty pretty tall order. So there are a lot of questions about how these people got there. There are a few theories. Nobody knows exactly for sure. How did they get to the Americas? As Bible-believing Christians, we know that, that um, the Garden of Eden was somewhere in the Middle East, and we know that, and so it's kind of interesting to think about how did, you know, you can kind of get how people got to Europe and how they got to Asia and how they got to Africa, but it's really interesting to think about how people got to North and South America, and there are some theories about that. So... <coughs> Scholars today still are mystified by it, in fact. Archaeological findings vary on where these people migrated from. If you look on page 159 in your organizer, we're on section 1 where it says Mesoamerica. Scientists who study the origins of people are called anthropologists. Anthro means human. <coughs> Some anthropologists think that um, people migrated from Africa. They think that the early Americans might have come from Asia, India, or China in particular. The most popular theory, and you can see this theory on 291 in your book. There's a map. Um, at the top, on the top left corner, that shows how this theory works. The most popular theory is that people crossed over the Bering Strait into what is now Alaska. The Bering Strait is a is a narrow um, uh, section of water between Russia and Alaska, and the theory is is that 
the uh, water wasn't as deep there at one point and that people crossed over on what was called the Bering Land Bridge. There's a lot of controversy about this. Was this how they got there? Was it not how they got there? There are some other people who think at one point um, all of the Earth's continents fit together into something called Pangaea. That's a pretty viable theory. So nobody actually knows. <coughs> but the theory is then that once people got here, the migration continued and they continued to move south into the region known as Mesoamerica. And that's, uh, that's the title of this section on 159 in your SAM, Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica comes from the Greek word for middle. And so Mesoamerica is that land that's sort of between North America and South America. We call it Central America now. Um, but it's the land from about halfway down Mexico, so central Mexico, down to Costa Rica. That's the land known as Mesoamerica. Now, when we study the Bible, we know that God created Adam and Eve, and everyone descended from them. We know the whole world was covered with a flood. We know Noah and his family were the only survivors. How did some of their descendants get to America? There's just a lot we don't know. In fact, that's one of my questions on my list. Do you guys know about my list of questions that I have for when I get to heaven? Probably when I get there, it won't even matter, and I won't even care anymore. But if God wants to answer my questions, I think it'd be really cool to find out some of this stuff. Um, there's so much about the past that we don't know. And so archaeologists and anthropologists are always trying to study, to put together possible answers for what's going on. Um... There is a, uh, another uh, and I was trying to make sure that I got this, but now I don't see it. I've lost it. Well, the, um, the peninsula that, um, or yeah, the peninsula, there's a land mass that extends um, into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's known as the Yucatan Peninsula. And so that's the second, like under Mesoamerica on page 159. And I'm not sure why that's. <coughs> if you want more information on this land and the region today, of course, you can look in your book on 292. There's a lot of really good information there. And a map that will show you um, some of the places that we're going to talk about when we talk about the Olmecs. I'm going to talk about the Olmecs today, and then in my next video, we'll talk about the Maya. That's a much larger section because we know a lot more about the Maya than we know about the Olmecs. So on 293 in your book, 159 in your SAM, let's talk about the Olmecs. The ancient Olmec civilization is really, really fascinating. There's, it's difficult to, uh, to find a lot of, out a lot about the Olmecs without drifting into Maya civilization as well. Uh, but you can look on 293 in your book and you can see this giant stone head. This is an Olmec statue. <coughs> the Olmec civilization is one of the earliest great civilizations in Mesoamerica, uh, at least that we know of. The culture of the, the Olmecs began around 1500 BC. Um, historians believed they lived along the southern Gulf of Mexico. Um, and the Olmec civilization lasted from about 1500 to about 400 BC. The major center of the Olmec civilization included a city whose name I always mispronounce because it's so difficult. It's on 293, Tenochtitlan, I think. But man, that's difficult for my tongue for some reason. Um, some other cities that were very important were San Lorenzo and uh, Portrero Nuevo. Historians called this... Um, this whole center, this urban center of these cities, San Lorenzo 
Tenochtitlan. Um, what's really interesting about this area is that they had water, they had drainage systems, um, they had houses made of wood and clay and palm leaves. What I want to stop real quick though and, and, and say is it's very interesting to note that they did have water and drainage systems much like some of the ancient civilizations in India, like Mohenjo-Daro and the Harappan civilization, and how they had that wonderful indoor plumbing. <coughs> there was another large city, and it was one of the largest and most famous Olmec cities called La Venta. La Venta. La Venta was located in Mexico on the northeastern coast of Mesoamerica. The Olmecs do not have very many records about the, their culture and their everyday life. Um, there is some evidence that archaeologists have dug up that tells us that Olmecs lived near rivers. Um, that kind of fits with all of the other ancient civilizations that we've studied, right? These river valley civilizations, they live near the coast or they live near rivers because water is life. Um, the Olmecs were hunters and they were fishermen and they were farmers. Um, the most famous Olmec findings are, of course, these gigantic stone heads. These are not tiny little things. These are big and they are pretty, pretty astonishing. Um, they carved these heads from a number of different materials. Stone, jade, and basalt, which is a type of volcanic rock and is something that they used pretty frequently in their carvings. Um, some of the stones were from other places. So like they would get these large pieces of stone and move them and carve them from as far away as like 60 miles. And some of these stone heads weigh as much as 40 tons. One ton is 2,000 pounds. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many, how big these are. And it's really kind of blows your mind to try and think about how on earth did they get these huge stones, these 40 ton stones moved from one place 60 miles away to this place 60 miles away over here. Um, archaeologists think maybe they floated them down on rivers. Don't know. Um, in the end, uh, much like the mystery of the pyramids, the mystery of Stonehenge, Easter Island, all of these things, we just don't know. Um, some of the things that we do know about the Olmecs are that many of their customs and their beliefs were passed on to other Mesoamerican civilizations. For instance, their calendar. The calendar that's been used for centuries in Mexico may have, probably, possibly might have originated with the Olmecs. Astronomy, the study of the stars and the planets, was very important to the Olmecs, and people continued that into these subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations. Some historians believe that the Olmecs were the first to play a ball game that became very popular in later Mesoamerican civilizations. If you were able to watch that video that I sent out last week on the Mesoamerican ball game, um, you, you'll find out a little bit more about that. The Olmecs uh, were also known for their rubber making. If you look on page 294, there's a little bit that you can read about natural rubber. They were some of the first people to use natural rubber. The rubber tree, um, the sap is latex basically and you can collect the sap and um, use it to make waterproof items. They used them to make balls, which they would play with these games. In fact, one of the videos that I looked up, actually, um, you can find, they still have them in uh, museums in Mexico, 
um, some balls made out of rubber that were that are dated uh, all the way back to the Olmec time period. And so the Olmecs were known as the rubber people because they used it in so many ways. And this is one of the interesting things that the European explorers took back to Europe with them was this amazing thing known as rubber. Now tomorrow or Monday I'm going to make another video about um, the Mayas and we'll start talking about the Mayan civilization. But until then, I'll see you later. Have a great day.